All right. Good, good morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, decentralized internet and privacy uh, dev room uh, here at uh, FOSDEM uh, uh, 2018. My name is uh, Tristan Nito. I'm a French citizen. Um, my email address, which is a decentralized protocol, which I encourage you to use, is uh, Tristan at Nito.com. I work for a company, a French company, French startup called Cozy Cloud. Um, and well, I'm here to uh, welcome you and introduce uh, the day. The day is in uh, two parts. The first part is focusing on uh, decentralized internet. And the next one uh, is a more related to privacy. Uh, we will see that they actually it's the two sides of the same coin. Uh, they have a lot in common. Um, and this is why the organizers have suggested that we uh, merge uh, the, the, two, uh, the two tracks uh, in the same day and in the same room. I will discuss today uh, the relationship between code and architecture. Um, first, uh, a few words to introduce myself. I have spent uh, se 17 years with the uh, Mozilla uh, project. I was a Netscape employee when it started in '98. Um, that's really uh, well. We're celebrating uh, in two months. From next month, we're going to celebrate the 20 years of the uh, Mozilla project. I think I went to uh, FOSDEM the first time in 2002. Um, when I left Mozilla, I wrote a book uh, called Surveillance. Um, it's only in French uh, for the moment about decentralization and, uh, and privacy and the role of uh, free software in all of this. And now I am uh, with uh, Cozy.io, uh, Cozy Cloud, which is a personal cloud, uh, free and open source software version of it, uh, to, give, uh, to empower people and give them more privacy with their personal data. I will go through uh, uh, with my slides to with important uh, people, uh, in my opinion, in our fight. Uh, the first one is uh, Lawrence Lessig, uh, famous for uh, Creative Commons and other things, uh, who famously said uh, back in '99, which is uh, uh, well old enough to be interesting, that code is law. What he meant by that is that uh, developers and programmers, the people who write the software, decide what the software is going to do. That's obvious. But because digital technologies in, uh, are taking over the world, and because, well, as Mark Andreessen uh, said, uh, software is eating the world, the people who write the software actually decide what the ordinary users will be able to do with the things they buy and use in their everyday life. Um, so another person I like to, man to talk about is, uh, is Spider-Man, who obviously said that with great power comes great responsibility. As we write software, we have the responsibility to uh, decide for other people what they can and cannot do, which makes us actually writing the law, or we decide what people can and cannot do. Um, another person which I have to mention, of course, is Edward Snowden. So uh, Snowden has said a lot of things and have, uh, as a whistleblower, uh, given uh, literally thousands of documents uh, to uh, reporters uh, to talk about it. But if, if you had to sum, uh, to sum up really what, uh, for, uh, what, what Snowden is about, is that because we give all of our data to a few very large internet companies, we actually make economically possible uh, mass surveillance. It's the NSA wants to uh, have an eye on everybody on Earth. That's, that's their wildest dream, but they can't do that because it's too expensive. But if we equip many of these people with smartphones and 
every people with a smartphone store their data within the, within the hands of Google and Apple, then suddenly it becomes economically feasible to do mass surveillance on half of the planet. It's still expensive, but they do have big budgets, and it's a lot easier than tracking every one of us. So centralization is, is a very dangerous thing because of that. Someone uh, who's less famous is Mitch Kapoor. Uh, Mitch Kapoor is, um, is known for uh, proprietary software, initially, uh, Lotus 1-2-3. Uh, he, uh, he invented it. Uh, he made a, quite a big uh, uh, pile of money um, in the process, but he's a great guy. Um, he was a founder of the EFF, uh, Electronic Fun Frontier Foundation. He was also uh, uh, very helpful in the birth of the Mozilla Foundation. He actually gave uh, quite a bit of money, of his personal money, uh, to help uh, the Mozilla Foundation take off uh, in the early days. And, and Mike said, architecture is politics. And really, if code is law, architecture is politics. The way we design systems is actually decided how they work and who is in power. If we centralize everything, we're deciding that the people, that a handful of people control what everybody else is doing. If we decentralize, we empower people locally to do that they want. This is why decentralization matters. S centralizing data and is concentrating power in the hands of a few corporations. And if, if we realize that we are centralizing more and more data and software is eating again and again the world and that technology is everywhere and is going to be worse tomorrow than today, then we need to make sure that technology is decentralized and is open source so that people have the power and not just a handful of very large corporations. We can invent a better world, and actually we, really, we already started. As I said, Mozilla is going to celebrate its 20th uh, birthday uh, this year, so uh, it's not it's not a new idea, it works. Um, I don't know if you've tried the latest iterations of, the, of Firefox, but it's, uh, it's amazing. It has done amazing progress. Of course, uh, GNU Linux, uh, even you know, uh, from, from the data center to your pockets and smartphones, the kernel is, uh, has done uh, wonders. And Wikipedia, uh, because well, Wikipedia. And this was just the beginning, we need to make sure this uh, Continues, And this is why the work that we do today, meeting together, uh, discussing um, the interest of uh, decentralization and privacy uh, is really uh, important. And today what we're going to discuss are these many, many aspects. How can we um, measure decentralization? As you uh, probably have heard of, uh, you can only change what you can actually measure. And so we need to measure if, if we are making progress uh, or not. We need to create decentralization technologies. Uh, we will need to build privacy improving technologies. We need to fund because, of course, you know, it's easier when you have money and a business model or at least funding. Um, we need to encourage people to use the technologies to, in order to make an impact. And overall, we need to create a movement of people that want to decentralize the internet and want to make uh, tools that enable privacy. So this is one of my uh, favorite uh, slides um, ever. It's up to us to build the new internet, which is uh, decentralized and private. And this is what I encourage you, uh, you today uh, by attending these sessions. Uh, let's build the decentralized and private by design internet that the people need and want. Thank you very much.